from Great House Grove, Satriano! You know, uh, years ago I read about Joe in the Long Beach Herald about this guy that uh, gives out so many scholarships to high school seniors and I was inspired by Joe's story and over the years, we became really good friends, and um, we started this tradition about doing the holiday party here, and I think it's our fourth or fifth year in a row, and it's, every year it gets better and better. We want to thank you for your hospitality, Joe, and you make it uh, a great way to end the year every year. You know, and Joe and I, we agree on a lot of things in life, but there's one small, slight uh, disagreement. Seeing that I grew up in Massachusetts, I'm a diehard Red Sox fan, and I promised, I promised my friend Joe tonight that I would not mention that the Red Sox beat the Yankees this year in the World Championship. So I'm sorry about that, Joe. I promise I wouldn't mention it. Thank you. Hello. But Joe, I want to give this uh, opportunity to thank you for your hospitality, and more importantly. More importantly, to talk about um, uh, the fo your foundation and all the great things that uh, you've done since the uh, foundation has began. And without further ado, let's give it up for our host, our great friend. He is Joe Satriano. That's my fan club over there. Oh, and over here. <laughs> so, uh, thank you, Howie, once again, uh, for not mentioning the Red Sox. Um, you know, I, I, didn't, I dressed down for the party. Um, yeah, I, um, I actually, uh, I went to a store to buy this, and uh, I needed alterations, and all these guys, all the tailors were doing was hemming and hawing about it. Oh. Oh. Tough crowd, Joe. Is the microphone working? <laughs> tough, tough crowd. Tough crowd. Anyway, so uh, I was going to sing also my favorite song of all time, my Frank Sinatra song, Strangers in My Nightgown. Oh. <laughs> but I don't want to compete with people like this who sing so great. Stop. And trust me, like the magician, I will be disappearing in a few minutes. <laughs> this is about the control I had of my classroom by the way, back in the day. I didn't. Anyway, so let, let, let me just bring up, most of you know the story, I'll make it very brief. Um, brief, that, am I talking about my underwear? I'm sorry, no. Uh, Anyway, uh, I was married to my wife, Susan, for 29 years, and uh, we were both studying to be math teachers. We actually met at Brooklyn College in a math class. How romantic is that? Um, if she were here today, she would tell you it was the only D she ever got in a math class. She told me she was slightly distracted. <laughs> I didn't believe that either. Um, and uh, I didn't know from women back in the day, I was, uh, uh, grew up under protective wings of Italian parents. Uh, I did not know she was pursuing me. I got an A. <laughs> Plus. Uh, but anyway, so, uh, you know, we, uh, we met at Brooklyn College and we had the all-American uh, life. We uh, uh, got married, uh, got the dog, bought the house here, um, had two wonderful children. And by the way, being math teachers, the best part about being married to a math teacher, truly, is that we did get to multiply. Oh. Oh. How many times did you multiply, Joe? Howie, could you stand in front of me, please? Because they're, they're going to throw things at me in a minute. No, seriously. So you knew you knew that joke, right? Yes. Yeah. How many times have you uh, heard it? They <laughs> multiplied twice. Oh, there you go. And one of them ended up in the great state of Massachusetts. Had to set a throw that in. Oh. Yes, that was probably the biggest mistake of his life. No, actually, uh, he, he'll be here, actually, if you guys hang around. Um, 
And, uh, and my other son is uh, up in Canada. He's coming down. Uh, he should be here by 10 o'clock, so that's cool. Uh, they're going to spend uh, Christmas with me. But anyway, so uh, we lived, we, we had the all-American life, everything was beautiful, and then suddenly, 16 years into our 29-year marriage, just to bring the party down, <laughs> uh, Sue contracted breast cancer, and then uh, 13 years after she did pass away. Um, I actually retired four years early to be with her, uh, because I was cheating the kids I was teaching in front of that classroom. Uh, you know, her health had taken such a bad turn, and I, when I do something, I do it 100%, as you can see by my outfit. So, um, so I, uh, my district allowed me to retire four years early, which was amazing. I was not of, of age yet. By the way, my district was Rothland High School. Uh, they're, they're making a movie. I don't know if you knew this, Howard. They're making a movie about my superintendent. This is absolutely true. For once, I'm telling you something true. Uh, it's called Bad Education. This, this man uh, actually absconded with $8 million from the district. Yeah, and uh, yeah, he, uh, he got caught and all that stuff. But he was my friend, I hate to admit it, but I do want to go on record. I returned every paper clip and post that I ever borrowed from the district. <laughs> but uh, the movie should be out sometime in, uh, in 2019. I was hoping they were going to ask for a cameo from a math teacher, but <laughs> they never got to me. But anyway, so um, so uh, Sue had a 13-year battle with breast cancer. She passed away in uh, 2005, and uh, I had retired, and I actually spent the last four years of her life together with, with her, which was amazing. I wouldn't change a thing other than the outcome, because in 2005, like I said, she does pass away, and Joe here had no direction, no purpose, no job, no nothing. Uh, and really, it took about six months of my life. Uh, if you wanted to find me, it was right upstairs in my bedroom. I was under my covers in fetal position, crying all day, truly. Um, very sad picture. But the amazing, amazing thing about life, and I'm not a, a psychologist by any means, but the human spirit, I'll call it that because I don't know what else to call it, it allows us to take these punches between our eyes and you reel backwards for as much time as you need to reel backwards. That's called grief. And then suddenly, you find your path. You find your epiphany. Something happened to me, like a lightning bolt hit my head, and I said, this is ridiculous. What am I doing? I was doing nothing for anybody. So I started the Susan Satriano Foundation, uh, which uh, three requirements for kids to get the scholarship. Number one, graduating high school senior. That's easy. Number two, going to an accredited college in the fall. That's easy. The kicker to be eligible, unfortunately, they have to have a parent who's either passed away of cancer, presently battling, or in remission. And I'm so proud to say that I've done it for 13 years. At the end of this academic year, I've now helped over 1,500 kids across the nation. <laughs> With uh, lots of scholarships. And uh, the, the best part of what I do, though, truly, more than the money, is I go and talk to every single kid. Uh, I ask each school district to give me 20 minutes with each child. I tell them my story, and then they open up. It's amazing. They don't know me. I'm a, I'm, I'm a stranger. But uh, we've walked the walk, and my words and their words are very powerful because we've experienced the same thing. And they, and they become lifelong friends. I can show you letters upstairs that I've gotten from these kids, and I don't ask them to write to me. But they tell me about how the foundation has affected their life so positively that they want to give back uh, at their colleges. They want to... Uh, do something to help others. It's just remarkable how this thing has blown blown up in the leap, leaps and bounds. It started in 2006 with Sue's life insurance check. I took it and divvied it up amongst four kids here in Oceanside. Uh, and now, like I said, I'm helping over 1,500 kids. Uh, so, yeah, it, it's just been a joy to help. And I found a new way to help kids without being in front of a classroom, and that's what I do. And then the last thing, about, I won't bore you all to death because I've already done it, is I, uh, I actually surprised myself by writing a book, you know, and it's not a math textbook. <laughs> um, it's called In Sickness and in Health, A Memoir of Love. It's a story of my life with Susan. Uh, it's not a book about loss, even though you know the ending. It's a book about hope and optimism and love. That's the way Sue and I lived it. Um, and uh, probably the best part of the book is that 100% um, of its proceeds goes to the foundation. And since the book's been out, which is now going on seven years, uh, the foundation's grown by over $20,000. So people are reading this. Yeah. I could suggest either you purchase one, or you could wait until the movie comes out. Of course, you know who's playing me. It's so obvious, right? You see it? Look, look. Look, let me give you the profile. George Clooney, see it? 
people tell me we were separated at birth. It's just, it's just one of those things. But uh, I've had to live with that all my life. Walking down the street, George, I turn around, no, it's only Joe. But anyway, so, um, yeah, uh, I can guarantee two things about this book. Number one, uh, since I was a former high school math teacher, the pages are numbered consecutively. I knew the words would confuse you enough. I didn't want the pages to. And of course, it comes in a hardcover version. That's great because it makes a better doorstop. Hello? Hello? <laughs> No, anyway, so yeah, so basically it, it's, it's an amazing run. I never knew I would do this, uh, you know, 13 years ago. I'm so happy that I found my niche. Uh, I'm so happy that I found a wonderful bunch of friends, everyone here. Um, because the truth is, is that we are, we are not like separate pieces of driftwood. We do bump into each other and we need that support and we need that help from friends and family and if you're faithful to your, to your religion, uh, whatever gets you through the day, that's what you want to do. As a matter of fact, I usually end my book talks with uh, John Lennon's Whatever Gets You Through the Night. It's all right. You know, and it's different for everybody. So you do what you got to do to make each day count. Hopefully you put a smile on your face, put a smile on other people's faces, enjoy every minute. I'm not saying enjoy it like it's your last day, just enjoy, because life is so short and it can turn on a dime, and we don't know what's around life's next corner. So you get out there and, and live it and love it. Uh, so that's my story. By the way, I'm writing a second book, I, I should tell you that. You may like the title of the second book, because this one takes you to Sue's last breath, the next one will take you from that moment on, which includes the hilarious dating scene at my advanced age. <laughs> I, I usually don't go, do it too well because I wear this on my first date. <laughs> but um, anyway, so because, because Sue and I were both high school math teachers and it's from that moment on, you ready for the title, guys? Ready? After math. After math, yes. Yeah. So that's my story. Thank you guys for coming. Thank you for being so wonderful friends and, and helping each other get through life every day and enjoying things. And uh, I, I'm so happy that you're here. So enjoy your holiday season, guys. Thank you. Show, thank you. Show.